Welcome back. I am so excited to show you this file that I designed and built. This is a uh, mechanical iris box that prints in place. I had the idea to have it open like a flower, but look all sci-fi and crazy and check this out. Opened up, container, and then it closes back down, it's closed, won't pop open. But the craziest part is this is print in place. This is one piece that prints like this in your printer, you plop it off, you give it a twist, and it just works. You don't have to assemble anything. I'm gonna take you through how I designed it, what all the different parts look like, and the, uh, the, the two different types of print-in-place hinges I used. And I've got a problem and some questions that I'll get to in the end that maybe you can help me with. The basic principles of this thing are, well, it's a lot to explain. There's a lot of moving parts to this, right? Uh, but the basics are pretty much just each leaf is a plane, and the plane has a pivot point towards the back or in the middle, and then you're pulling even further back. So it's like a teeter-totter. So that's all it is, is you have a pivot point and then something pulling on the back. Here's the beginning of it. This is the leaf. Now there are a bunch of these, and I've made some modifications to this that we'll get back to here in a little bit. I started with just a triangle. And here we have two hinges on the leaf itself. The leaf is pulled, it pivots on this main cylinder here. So we can see here the pivot point here. And the modifications I made to this leaf, it was just a triangle, but you can see here these are relief angles. So as it raises and lowers, it isn't gonna collide with the leaf next to it or the bits of plastic here. These are also relief angles here so that I could get a tighter coverage. Um, but let's look at this hinge here, the first hinge, which is the pivot hinge. For that one, I used, let's hide this again, the main cylinder here. For that one, I used this as my hinge. The pin of the hinge is a cone here so that it can be printed completely on its own without supports. Being at a 45 degree angle means that as this is printing from, this is actually the bottom of the print whenever it's on the bed. Here, let's orient it like it is on the bed. So this is how it is on the print bed. And when you look at it this way, you can see that you would be coming up from the bottom and you would hit this cylinder and this angle allows it to print without supports, which is good because this is captive inside a hole that's the same size. Now here's a tip for you. You can leave a 0.5 millimeter gap anywhere and it'll be fine. You can print uh, things with a 0.5 millimeter gap and they will not fuse together, assuming your printer is pretty well dialed in or just a stock Prusa. That's what I use. So let's, let's visualize this a little bit here real quick. Uh, let's make sure we have this selected. Let's, oh, that was the wrong button. Let's do a, um, a, 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 a section analysis because I can kind of emulate a slicer here with this. Okay, so we start printing. We can see here our bottom layers. They come up, boom, boom, boom boom, boom, and here we are to this pivot, and those angles allow it to print without support. So that's pretty much how that works, that pivot there. Now this one, if you look at the print itself, up close at the print itself, this is the first layer here right at the bottom, and even though the model is perfectly round here, uh, that first layer isn't on the printer itself. And I used a different method of capturing it here. Let's pull up the cylinder arm here. So this is what actually pulls this. Oops. So now we look at this and we can see I've left a gap here on the bottom, on the first layer. So this first layer, that's all even and level there. And basically leaving this gap allows this all to be on the first layer and it prints separately even though I have that as a perfect circle instead of having a flat spot on the bottom. A flat spot on the bottom might have been smarter because some people have had a hard time printing that. 
But you can see it's a different method here than the cone method I used elsewhere. So let's flip this back over and you can see these are the two main components here, or the, the few main components. Okay, so we have, we have this main cylinder that is the container itself. Let's get rid of this draft or this, uh, this analysis. I don't know where that is. I've got the section analysis hidden. There we go. Okay, so we've got the main cylinder here, which is the, the container itself. You can see down in there. Now, since this was printing upside down, I did a 45 degree angle up in here, so you wouldn't have those nasty droopies from bridging at the top there. That's also why this is a 45 degree angle and this stop here is a 45 degree angle. This really serves no purpose. Uh, I threw it in there thinking it would keep you from pulling too far down on everything and, and breaking it, but I doubt it even comes into play. So here you can see how this would work. I don't have a motion analysis set up, but basically this arm pulls down, which pivots here and rotates that up just like this, just like what I was showing you here. It pulls down and that rotates up like that. So how do I pull that down? I had a bunch of ideas on how to do that and I decided I liked the concept of a screw mechanism. So then what that involved was this item here. So this is another piece that prints and this one has actual threads on it. Now if you've printed this or if you've seen the video already, you know it takes a bunch of turns to open this. So if I were to do this over again, I would increase the pitch of that a lot so that maybe one full turn opens it. Um, but when I designed this, you know, I, I wasn't real secure in my knowledge of how to do the, the threads within Fusion. And that would have involved having to design my own custom ones, I think. I don't think the thread pitch can go that steep in Fusion using the thread tool. And I just didn't, I wanted to tackle one problem at a time. And the problem this time was print in place motion, uh, not, not thread creation. So, here you can see the mechanism. This outer ring moves downward. The inner ring stays still. This outer ring moving downward pulls on this arm here, this, this arm here, which then rotates that leaf upward and outward. So how do we pull down on this? Um, you know, I could have just 3D printed it to be something you pull on and then put a, a spring so that it pulls back into place but I liked the idea of twisting it. So then we have the outermost piece that goes on. And this has threads on the inside, which we will look at with a draft analysis here. So here we go. This is the side view of the whole thing. And we can see that as you spin this outer ring, oh, that's what this stop was for. I forgot about this. This holds this outer ring in place so the whole thing doesn't come apart as you, uh, as you screw it, you know, as you twist it. So this actually serves a pretty good purpose. Yeah, I forgot about that. This holds this outer one in, part, in, in place. Now, like I said, 0.5 millimeters is all you need to leave here. And you can see I have threads all the way down to here so that as you turn it, this, place, this piece has nowhere to go but down. This, uh, this cylinder here has nowhere to go but downward, which then opens the thing up. And that's how it works. Okay, now the problem and the questions I have. But before I get to that, I wanna say thank you so much to my Patreon sponsors. Uh, they help fund all of the controllers that I make for gamers with physical disabilities and you know this channel and all kinds of stuff. You can learn more about that in the description 
below. So those questions that I have. The first is the problem. When I designed this in Fusion, everything here on the top, which is the bottom when you print it, is perfectly planar. There's nothing out of plane. But in Prusa Slicer, uh, when you go to lay flat on the bed, there's a few pieces out of plane that you can choose from, and that's really throwing some people for a loop. I don't remember what I did to screw that up. I don't know if I exported it wrong or if I combined all the parts in Prusa Slicer instead of in Fusion, but it's a problem. And I'm curious if anybody has any tips on how to fix that or, or what would have caused that. And then I have some questions. Um, if you are familiar with creating your own threads or familiar with Fusion's threads, maybe, maybe let me know in the comments down below how to create a very steep thread that could open this in maybe like a half turn. That would be awesome. I don't know if I'm gonna have to use like a helix tool to make it myself or loft like a, a, a shape on a path or if the inbuilt thread tool can go that steep. I kind of don't think it can. I printed it default 0.2 layer settings, PLA and Prusa Slicer on the quality setting. That's it. Nothing special, nothing fancy. You do have to make sure your bed's nice and clean though because there's lots of little bitty parts on those first few layers. All right. Thanks. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. I hope you print it and enjoy it. I'll see you next time.